Good morning, Latchford. Oh, there's a quite a few people here today. That's fantastic. <laughs> Lovely to see you all. Uh, we are live streaming also today um, to the Facebook page. So if you're joining us on the Facebook page, a very warm welcome. Uh, and we are also live streaming uh, out into the circuit. And I know for sure that Ashton uh, Methodist Church are joining us this morning. So a very warm welcome uh, to the folk down there at Ashton. Now, just check in how many of you are observant. <laughs> yes, we've aged 10 years. I've got Sunday the 5th of March, 2033. <laughs> Thank you, Jock, for pointing that out to me. <laughs> I don't quite know what happened there, but uh, I can assure you it's 2023. <laughs> I don't want people panicking. Uh, but a warm welcome to you all. We are, of course, uh, the second Sunday in Lent, uh, and so we continue on this journey uh, through the season uh, as we uh, look forward uh, to Easter. We're going to stand to sing our first uh, hymn this morning, which is To God Be the Glory, and uh, all the um, words are on screen. Uh, it is number 94 if you've got a book. We stand to sing. Let us pray. 
Lord, as we sing of your glory this morning, we come with our hearts full of gladness and thankfulness. For you are such an awesome God. You bless us day by day. And there are many times when we call upon you and you answer our prayer. We thank you, Lord, that you are a God of hope, that with you in our lives we can face all the trials, all the desert places, all the times of despair. For you uphold us, you love us, and you keep us on our feet. So, Lord, we just thank you this morning for those times where you have worked in our lives, those times that you have brought us through, so that our rejoicing comes from a place of deep gratitude. We thank you, Lord, that you bring us together as your family. We thank you that you unite us through your love. So, Lord, as we gather today, both here in person and online, we pray that you will just bind us together in your love, that we will feel a great, wonderful presence with other people. So, Lord, as we worship we, you, we pray that our worship will be worthy, that we can honour and glorify your name. So be with us, Lord. Just touch our hearts this morning and fill us with your spirit, that as we worship, we can come deeper into a relationship and know more of your love for us. So, Lord, we just thank you for this opportunity, for this freedom to gather together. And we thank you this morning, especially for all our young people. And we pray that you will bless them as they go into their class to learn about you and to have fun. We pray, Lord, that you will just be close to them and be with our teachers. Give them the wisdom, the courage, and everything that they need to do this incredible work with our young people. We thank you for them, Lord, for their dedication week by week. So, Lord, bless us all in this worship time. In your name we pray. Amen. Our young people are going to leave us. <coughs> Okay, two years ago, <clears throat> me and my daughter rescued a dog. <laughs> That's our Roxy. <laughs> I have to say it was a steep learning curve. There were those days when we both thought, what on earth have we done? This is too hard. We don't know what we're doing. And we missed our old life. You know, when you could do what you wanted, when you wanted. <laughs> and you didn't have to think about anything else or anyone else. But we'd made a commitment. And so we stuck it out. And now we have this beautiful, funny, loving member of our family. Now, not being a dog myself, I don't know if she gets bored. Especially when I take her out on a walk. Because... We've been doing the same walks for two years. They vary a little bit because we can go down the canal or we can go onto the field or we can go through the woods. But it's the same walks. Now, I get bored and I think, how can I spice this up? So, like, we might do the field and then whip onto the canal just for a change of scenery. <laughs> it's one of those... The, this week I was uh, walking through the woods with her and uh, I was thinking about this, thinking there must be somewhere else. I mean, I can put her in the car and take her somewhere, but I want something that's just local in walking distance. I was thinking there must be somewhere else. And I'm bored with this walk. 
when suddenly what came into my mind uh, was this is a routine and sometimes routines are the same day in day out we get stuck and we get trapped there must be something that springs to mind for you that is a routine that you do every day or every other day or even once a week so you might eat the same food on a monday every monday sausage egg and chips or something like that you might eat the same food on the same days you might strip your bed only on a saturday and remake it your shopping day may be a wednesday you may only visit family on birthdays in essence your life is full of routines and by the very fact that you are sat here today or you're watching online tells me that coming to worship is part of your weekly routine i wonder do you have expectations about how worship will happen Will its content include hymns? Topical points to be made? Prayer? Meeting of friends and catching up? I wonder how we're doing so far that your routine of coming to church has been realised. But the question for you is to ponder on is, does your routine of worship need renewing? Is there anything missing that you would want including? Now, your answer might be no and nothing. But if something comes to mind, then you can post on the Facebook page or you can have a word with me, you can send me an email or a text message or phone me. If you feel that there might be something, maybe you think you need more prayer our testimony that's something that we rarely do in the methodist church or more drama i know you get drama when you have the worship leaders and they're, they're very good at that or maybe video or is there something missing from worship from the routine of worship that you think should be included when worship becomes a familiar pathway We can be missing out on blessings and missing those God-given moments. Now I know for Rixton Methodist, uh, they've requested interactive worship, please. They said they've been preached at for years and they don't want it anymore. They want to be part of the worship they want to be included they want to have conversations and it's allowed a new freedom in their worship and the spirit flows and there's laughter and there's conversation and there's learning and it's just a different kind of worship it all leads me to think about what are our pathways to God are we on the same pathway that we've been on for years? Is your pathway exciting and transforming? What does your spiritual pathway even look like? Something for you to ponder this week. We're going to stand to sing. This is a, I don't often use this hymn because there's actually no theology in it as such. But uh, I know it's liked by a lot of people and it fits um, the theme. One more step along the world I go. There is no mention of God or Jesus or Holy Spirit in this. Uh, so anybody could sing it. But um, when we sing it, we imagine that we're walking this pathway uh, with God. So we stand to sing.
Marjorie's going to come and share with us some words uh, from John's Gospel. is taken from John chapter 3 verses 1 to 17. Jesus teaches Nicodemus. Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know you are a teacher who has come from God. For no one could perform the miraculous signs you are doing if God God were not with him. In reply, Jesus declared, I tell you the truth. No one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. How can a man be born when he is old? Nicodemus asked. Surely he cannot enter a second time into his mother's womb to be born? Jesus answered, I tell you the truth. No one can enter the kingdom of God unless he is born of water and the Spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the Spirit gives birth to Spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying, you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. How can this be? Nicodemus asked. You are Israel's teacher, said Jesus, and you do not understand these things. I tell you the truth. We speak of what we know, and we testify to what we have seen. But still you people do not accept our testimony. You on earthly things. How then will you believe if I speak of heavenly things? No one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven, the Son of Man. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the desert, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Amen. A spiritual pathway is the way a person most naturally connects to God and grows spiritually. There are many pathways. I'm just going to share a few with you. And uh, you will probably see yourself in one or two of them. So first of all, there's the relational pathway. A relational pathway is about being involved with people, getting alongside someone. And God often speaks to us through significant relationships. So when you're in community with people and you love being in community with people uh, and you talk about the Lord with each other and Sometimes people grow like that, and that's their way to connect to God. Which was Peter's way. 
Peter's most defining moments in his life was his decision, first of all, to follow Jesus, his confession that he was the Messiah, and his and his restoration. All of that took place in a relational context. So maybe your pathway is one about being with people talking about God. Or maybe your pathway is an intellectual one. Thinkers come alive when they're in a learning environment. The road to your heart is through your head. The more you learn about God, the closer you draw to him. So I wonder how many of you see yourself on an intellectual pathway to God. Paul was one of those. Paul studied with Gamaliel, a great Jewish scholar. He loved studying. There is the worship pathway. Those who have a deep love of corporate worship and praise and celebration you might be naturally quiet and shy, but in worship, wow, something happens. <laughs> you're enthusiastic and hands are up and you're dancing and it's, you, your whole demeanor changes. Maybe worship is your pathway to God. David, King David, wrote psalms and poetry as part of his worship and his love of God. Or maybe you're walking the activist pathway. In other words, you have a single-minded zeal and a strong sense of vision. You have a passion to build the church and work for justice. And you see the potential in others. Nehemiah was an activist on a pathway to God. He was troubled when he heard that Jerusalem was in ruins. He prayed about it. And then he took action. He rebuilt the walls of Jerusalem and the temple brick by brick. Prayer and action go hand in hand. Are you seeing yourself in any of these? <laughs> I can see. I can see that in one or two of you. And then there's a contemplative pathway. If you love uninterrupted time alone with God, no distractions, then that's your pathway to God. Mary didn't care about the housework. She wanted to sit at Jesus' feet and listen intently. Her pathway was that. And Mary, the mother of Jesus, pondered everything in her heart. Maybe that's your pathway. There's a service path pathway that connects you to God when you serve others. You would rather serve than be served. Dorcas, in the book of Acts, was known for her deeds. She served other people. She loved doing that. And that brought her closer to God. And what about the creation pathway? You respond deeply to God through creation. Being outdoors replenishes you, moves your heart, opens your soul, and strengthens your faith. You drink God in through your senses. And people on this pathway are often creative themselves. When we think about Jesus, 
he was drawn to nature. He often withdrew from the crowd and go and sit by a lake or on a mountain. He always wanted to be in nature. And he used the things of nature in a lot of his teachings. Which is no surprising, really, since he created creation and nature. Your pathway to God might be one of these, might be a mixture of them. If your pathway brings you into a deeper relationship with Jesus, then you're on the right one. If you're on a pathway and you're struggling and you can't connect to God, try a different pathway. And when we consider the pathway Jesus was on from birth to death, we see how he encompassed all of those pathways. He served people, he had contemplative times, uh, he was an activist, he stood up for justice. All of those were, on his, were part of his pathway. And at this time of year, in the season of Lent and Easter, we are very familiar with the pathway that Jesus walked. And we are invited to join him on that walk to experience those moments of temptation, of desolation, of pain, of sadness, of hope, of light, and of resurrection. Now your pathway is unique to you. And as we heard in the reading from Nicodemus, he will have followed a way that took him to being a, a Pharisee and a member of the Sanhedrin. But when his pathway crossed with Jesus, he became a believer. He chose not to follow Jesus out in public, but he sought him in the night. And it was there that Jesus taught him. He remained a Pharisee, a member of the Sanhedrin. He was the one that said to them that a man has to be heard before he's judged because they were ready to hang, draw and quarter Jesus without a trial. And Nicodemus came with spices to help prepare Jesus' body. I bet Nicodemus thought his pathway was secure. His young life had been dedicated to learning and following a path. He studied the Torah, the law. Those things were so precious. They were everything to him on this pathway. But an encounter with Jesus is life-changing and puts you on the right pathway. The one that leads to life everlasting. The one that leads you to know forgiveness. The one that leads you to know you are loved, cherished, honoured as a child of God. As Nicodemus wrestled, trying to understand this idea of rebirth, Jesus gets irritated, saying, I've tried with simple words and pictures of everyday life, and you still don't understand. <clears throat> How can you ever understand the deep things if the simple things are beyond you? And there's a great truth here for all of us. It's easy to sit in discussion groups, to study and to read books, it's easy to discuss the intellectual truth of Christianity, to know about God. But the essential thing is to experience for yourself the power of God through the empowering of the Holy Spirit. 
Being a Christian, being a disciple, is something to be experienced, not just discussed. We do need an intellectual grasp on things, but more importantly is to experience the power of Jesus in our lives. At the heart of Christianity is the mystery of redemption. This life now, and when lived in faith and belief, is transformed into a new life. And it speaks of the good news found in Christ. That new life goes the extra mile for others. That new life is God's very presence in the world. When our pathway is crossed with Christ, we get on a new pathway and our lives are transformed. Let's not misunderstand. To be born again is to be changed in such a way that it can only be described as a rebirth or a recreation. So are you ready for transformation? Are you ready for rebirth? Are you ready to be made new? Ask and it will be given. Seek the pathway and you will find it. May God bless us on our journeys, on our pathways of discovery and rebirth. Amen. Now we're going to uh, listen to, um, we can join in the singing of course, uh, a video song. Uh, it's from the late 80s, uh, a Graham Kendrick song. Uh, if you were a fan of Mission Praise back then, uh, you'll know this one. We'll walk the land with hearts on fire. We'll remain seated. Uh, and if you want to join in, please feel free to. Some of you remember that one. 
want to see, do you? Yeah. <laughs> We're now going to uh, take up our offertory uh, for the work of God in this place and uh, circuit. Thank you. Lord, you bless us with all good things. We offer our gifts of money as a sign of our love. We pray that you'll bless this money, that it will be used wisely to bring your life to this world. In your name we pray. Amen. And so we come to a time of prayer uh, where we remember the world and those we know. Um, today, when I, as I um, read our prayer list, I'll also be including a prayer list uh, from Ashton. So let us pray. Drawn by the Holy Spirit, we pray together for the church and for the world. Lord God, as members of your church in this generation, we ask for your guidance and blessings on us all. As the people of God, we ask for the gifts we need for all the work you need us to do. Let us walk with you, Lord, every step of the way. Lord, this fragile, vulnerable planet is so beautiful and in such need of your guidance. We pray for a deeper valuing of our universe and of one another. We pray for your kingdom to come on earth as in heaven. Let us walk with you, Lord, every step of the way. Lord God, may our homes be centres of love, acceptance and welcome. We pray that you will make your home amongst us, in each room and each relationship. Let us walk with you, Lord, every step of the way. Lord God, we pray for all who are weighed down with doubts, fears and misgivings, all who are haunted by the past or scared by the future. We ask for them an awareness of your constant presence and courage to place their hand in yours. Lord God, we pray for those who are sick and we offer to you the names on our prayer list. Lord, we especially pray today for Rita and family on the loss of Frank. We thank you, Lord, that Frank has been returned home to you. But Lord, for those who are left, there is grief. Be with them, Lord. May they feel your love and your support at this time. Lord, we also pray for Dot. 
for Alan and Pat. We pray for Linda, Stuart and Millie. And we pray for Kay. From Ashton, we bring before you Lord Barry. And we pray for healing and strength to endure. We thank you for his positivity during this difficult time. Lord, we pray for Barbara and Len who are both struggling with health issues that make life more difficult. We thank you for their love and care for each other and the care shown in times of adversity. Bring peace and hope to their lives. And we pray for Diane, facing a serious illness and difficult treatment. We pray for healing and strength to endure. And Lord, we thank you for a safe return of Diane from being within the love of her family. And Lord, in a moment's quiet, we just name in our hearts those whom we carry with us, whom we know need our prayers. Lord, we ask that your love will bring comfort and hope to all we have named before you. Lord God, we give you thanks for all the blessings that you shower upon us along the pathway of life and for the painstaking guidance that you provide. Merciful Father, we offer these our prayers spoken and the prayers of our hearts, knowing in faith that you hear us and respond. We thank you that you are there and we can leave our concerns with you. We offer these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. And so as we prepare for uh, Holy Communion, uh, we, we stand to sing our communion hymn. Now let us rise from this table.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. God is with us in this time and place and for all times and in all places. In our journeys of darkness, we turn to you, O God, rejoicing in hope. There is God, creating out of our nothingness visions of a new heaven and a new earth, breaking beyond our horizons. There is God, rising in our gathering, with nail-torn hands held out, bearing the marks of deathly pain, the cost of the resurrected life. There is God amidst the hunger, the despair, the fear, bringing salvation through love in action. There is God in our togetherness, in our difference, holding all in his hands of compassion and mercy. Made in the image of God, we live and move and have our being. I am the bread of life, says the Lord. Take this bread, take this cup, it is given for you. Remember that life and love are stronger than death and nothing can separate you from the love of God in Christ Jesus. We believe Christ has died, Christ has risen and will come again. Before us are gifts of bread and wine. Pour out your spirit that as they become for us the living body. In faith we name this our holy table as it brings us closer to Christ. We gather as one people at Christ's table in all our frailty, none more worthy than the other, yet all made worthy in the resurrection of Christ. Death gives way to new birth, the bread of life for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You are invited to this table where justice refuses to lay down its dreams, where courage stands beyond weakness where hope defies all despair, where love could not be defeated. Come and share this life-giving meal. The body of Christ is given for you.
we say together, thank you, Lord, for your gifts of bread and wine, light and life. Bless us in our living. May your glory shine in this world and never be diminished. Amen. We stand to sing our final hymn, called by Christ to be disciples. May the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with us all this day and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>